Welcome back to lesson two of a cloud foundation. We are going to look today into cloud economics and billings and the AWS billing and dashboard. Before that, let us understand the fundamentals of pricing in AWS. So for compute services, you will be charged per hour if you use a Windows machine or if you create a virtual machine in the cloud, you will be charged per second for Linux machine. And this is varies between in a census type so for a T2 micro, you are going to pay way less than a T2 X large. For storage, you will be charged by the number of gigabytes you store in S3 in Amazon Simple Storage Service. And for data transfer, we have a generic rule for that. All data in is free. When you move your data in the same region, it's also free. But when you move the data, between two regions or two different regions like US East 1 and the Irish region, you are going to pay. How do you pay for AWS? You pay for what you use. So if you create one EC2 instance, you are going to be charged per hour if it is a Windows operating system or per second if it is a Linux operating system for 30 days, let's say, you're going to pay for that. However, if you reserve that EC2 instance and you reserve it in a contract of one or three year contract, you can get up to 75% of the on-demand price. And you can decide whether you want to pay all up front or partial up front or no up front at all uh, for that EC2 instance. However, with AWS, you can get a volume-based discount as well to basically reduce the total cost. If you have a large volume of a project, then you can get a customer pricing from AWS. The third factor is you pay less when you use more and AWS grows. So when they create more region, this means they are going to reduce their pricing model. You can join AWS and you can create a free tier account for 12 months. And this is will enable you to gain a free hands-on experience with AWS a platform, a product and service. And then you can basically practice those labs for the cloud foundation or the solution architect there as well. Many of the services are eligible for the free tier and other services are not eligible for a free tier and join the AWS free tier account, just go to aws.amazon.com, create a free account. And now here we want to fill an email address. I'm going to put our channel email. You could go back now and you need to verify your email. You need to go back and you will be able to sign into the account. You will be having like all the services, will have access to all services in the management console. And be careful here because you need to make sure that you don't create any service that you don't need. Or at least when you create a service for experiment, make sure to delete that service. Now, as you can see here, it's allocate me to the Irish region. I could switch to any of those regions as well. Later on from our account, we can specify to which regions you want your account to uh, use. Now let us just show you what is the free tier services here. If we go to EC2, from EC2, we want to launch an EC2 instance and we will select the first AMI, which is the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. We're going to describe this in more details in the future, just to show you here. Now, there is a family, which is a T2 machine with one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of memory. And this is eligible for the free tier which means for the first 12 months from the account creation, you can use this machine for free. You can use this machine for free up to 750 hours of the micro instances each month. So basically you could start a new business using those machines. So these are the free tier service list that you can find here. So for example, we can get up to 750 hours for Amazon EC2. Amazon SC3, you can get up to five gigabytes of data. Amazon RDS 750 with DynamoDB 250 gigabytes, SageMaker two months, and Lambda 1 million transaction per month. This is really good uh, value, guys. Like you can create a lot using the free tier account. Still, you will be charged for any data uh, that you move out of the region 
any request or any other non-free tier services. Some services, they come with no charge in AWS, like Amazon Virtual Private Cloud. When you create a virtual private cloud, it's going to be free of charge. Elastic Beanstalk is free of charge. Auto scaling, AWS Cloud Formation. When you use those services, you are not going to pay any price for them. And the AWS Identity and Access Management. Now, the resources created by Elastic Beanstalk or auto scaling or cloud formation, let's say auto scaling, create and add two more machines to support the demand in your infrastructure, then this is, will be charged. So, the key takeaways that we have there is no charge for inbound data, data transfer between services within the same region, and pay for what you use. You can start and stop at any time with AWS services like on-demand instances. You don't need to have a long-term contract and some services are free of charge and other AWS services are free to use for a free tier account. And let us move on to the total cost of ownership. So the TCO is a financial estimate to help you identify the direct and indirect cost of a system. So if a customer come to you and he want to migrate his business to the cloud, you can use the TCO calculator to give him a comparison, a side-by-side -side comparison between the cost of running the system on a data center and the cost of running the system in AWS cloud. And a tool to help you to do that is the TCO. I highly recommend to have a look to the TCO to understand how to use it when you design and build your architecture before you go to AWS Management Console and you build it for real. So the TCO compare the cost of running an entire infrastructure or specific workload on a premises versus an AWS a cloud, and you can use it to budget and build the business case for moving any business to the cloud. Some of the costs that are associated with data center management will be included in the TCO calculation, like server costs, storage costs, network costs, and any IT labor costs as well will be estimated. You can use the AWS pricing calculator to help you to estimate a monthly AWS bill for your infrastructure. And you can use this tool to explore the services and create an estimate. Sometimes you use this tool to find out in which region I should create an EC2 machine, in which region I could basically create an S3 bucket and give me the lowest price among all other AWS region. You can model your solution before building them and you can explore the price points and calculations behind your estimate to find available instance type, contract term that meet your needs. The AWS pricing calculator estimates are broken into the total for your first 12 months, your total upfront, your total monthly bill as well will be considered. And to understand the TCO, especially if you are doing the cloud foundation for your master degree or MBA business administration, or you are coming to cloud computing from a business background or marketing background, I recommend that you use the AWS pricing calculator. So we have a scenario, we need to build an application using Amazon Simple Queuing Service, and this application will be in the Irish region. What we need to use, we need to use a VPC, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, a Simple Queuing Service, and Amazon Athena and Amazon Lambda, based on the data you are seeing here in the slide. Let's move on. The AWS organization is a free account management service that enable us to consolidate multiple AWS accounts into an organization that you create and centrally manage. The AWS organizations include consolidated billing and account management that help you to meet the budget and compliance of your business. The main benefits of organization guys is centrally managed access policies across multiple AWS account and they can have a controlled access to AWS service and automated AWS account creation and management and consolidated billing across multiple AWS account. However, just a quick note about AWS organization. 
It is the service that we use when we want to build the multi-account pattern in AWS. This is something we will understand later on in the solution architecture. So when you have multiple teams, let's say you have a testing team in the United States, you have a dev team in Europe, and you have another team of a QA in India, for example, I want to create each team to manage their own budget and their security permissions by themselves, then the AWS organization is the right service for you. We call this the AWS multi-account pattern. Another service that you will find very useful to control your cost in AWS, it's the AWS billing and cost management. So you can set that service to monitor your monthly bill and the usage and the budget. You can also specify a budget for your monthly expenses. And you can use the billing and cost management to forecast and obtain a better idea about any future costs that will happen in your account. And you can set a custom time period or you can specify whether you would like to view your data at a monthly or daily level as well. There is other tools you can find very useful like the AWS cost and usage report tool, which enable you to identify any opportunity for cost optimization. And there is the AWS Cost Explorer, which can help you to explore the cost, or you can even use the AWS budget to set up an alert when your account reach a specific threshold. The next thing I want to demo is the billing. So if you go to your account, and from account, you can go to the billing and dashboard, which is the subject of the class today. You can see now I have not been working on this account in the last month, so I have zero money. However, you could go to the cost and usage report. You can create a new report, and that report will be like demo report. You can include the resource ID. You click on next. If you don't like spaces, go next. And now you can specify whether you want an hourly report or a monthly report. You can create a new report. And even if you have some data going out from Athena or Redshift or a quick site, you could also use that. And then you need to specify uh, the bucket that you need. So let's just call this demo and you can specify an existing bucket. I don't have a bucket. You can create a bucket demo cost and then you can use the region where you want the bucket to be created in my case i will create it in ireland click next and i have confirmed that this bucket is policy is going to be okay for me and then you click next and then review and complete so this is basically your cost usage report and you can open it and you can have a look to the demo cost that you have in a specific month in from, from your S3 bucket. You could also use the Cost Explorer. You can launch the Cost Explorer service and the Cost Explorer can give you um, a good insight about the services that you use, your saving plans, and even if you have any saving uh, reservation for an EC2 instance and any recommendation. The next thing I would like to demo is the AWS budget. You could create a budget. So when you create a budget, you could specify whether you want to put a cap on the cost to monitor the cost, or you monitor the usage, or you monitor also the saving. And let's use the cost budget now. Click next. This is going to be monthly carrying budget. And this is like December 2021 fixed. I want to keep my account below $100 a month. You could also add specific parameters, so you can specify which budget value you need. Like for example, I have C5N4X large, and that's the instance I want to monitor. You could also uh, see blended cost between all the services, and you click on next, and you specify how much the budget will take effect every month and then click on the budget name this is demo 
and next, and then create that project. So this is will send you email once your cost in a specific month start to reach the 100 threshold. Will give you an email or will send you an email to alert you about that. There is four support plans that you need to understand for the exam. There is the basic support, which is any user will have once you join the AWS Management Console. There is the developer support plan. There is the business, which can basically comes with its own technical support team. And there is the enterprise support, which is basically run a mission critical workload. That's pretty much what we need to do for the uh, module three. Let us move now to lesson three, the AWS Global Infrastructure.